I'm Patrick Byers, field specialist in horticulture with the University of Missouri Extension and native fruit enthusiast. Thank you for joining us today for our video on the American pawpaw and for sharing your interest in growing and enjoying this unique native fruit. The American pawpaw is native to much of eastern North America and is found across Missouri. In its native habitat, the American pawpaw is an understory tree found along streams, bottomland sites, and other areas that tend to be moist. The American pawpaw is a small to medium sized tree. It has a very distinct, unique foliage, long, tropical appearing leaves. The blossoms appear in the spring and then the fruit crop grows during the summer and is harvested in late August and September. For millennia, Native Americans harvested pawpaw from the wild and enjoyed the fruit of wild trees. It's only in recent years that we've seen interest in developing pawpaw cultivars. There are a number of pawpaw cultivars that were selected from wild trees. These include cultivars such as overlease and, and others. And then in more recent years, pawpaws have been developed in the course of organized breeding programs. The breeding program of Neil Peterson, for example, has yielded cultivars such as Shenandoah, Rappahannock, Susquehanna, Potomac, and others. And the breeding program at Kentucky State University has similarly developed improved pawpaws such as Atwood. While pawpaw orchards can be established from seedling trees, it's much more practical to plant an orchard of improved cultivars that are grafted. These trees will perform better, they'll, they'll produce crops of uniform fruit quality, and they'll produce fruit earlier in the life of the orchard. So strongly consider planting grafted trees. Grafted trees may be purchased from a nursery. Typically, one-year-old grafted trees that are a year out from grafting are what are planted. It is also possible to obtain pawpaw rootstock and do your own grafting. Pawpaw is a relatively easy tree to graft and a number of different grafting techniques have yielded success. While the native habitat of American pawpaw is bottomland sites, pawpaw can be successfully grown in many different places. Some important considerations to think about when selecting a site for pawpaw. First of all, try to find an elevated site. Pawpaw flowers in April and the blossoms are susceptible to late spring frosts, and elevated sites tend to have fewer problems with late spring frosts. Secondly, consider the soil. A good pawpaw soil is moderately fertile, it is well drained, and it is moderately deep. Other things to consider, the uh, pawpaw will require irrigation during dry periods, so make sure that you locate a pawpaw orchard close to a source of irrigation. And think about management of the orchard. Uh, pawpaws will require management, and placing the orchard in such a location that it's convenient to manage is important as well. Another consideration in selecting a site for pawpaw is marketing. Pawpaws can be marketed through a, a variety of channels, but frequently pawpaws are marketed at the farm or at a local farmer's market. And the closer that the orchard is located at the market, the more convenient it will be to market the fruit. Keep in mind that a pawpaw orchard is a long-term investment. The trees that you plant today may be productive for 20 or more years. And it's important, first of all, to select a good site for pawpaw, but secondly, to prepare that site in advance of planting. The first step in preparing a site for pawpaw production is to understand the soil. A soil test will return information on soil chemistry, soil pH, soil organic matter. These are important pieces of data that help guide decisions from the standpoint of preparing the site for pawpaw. A good pawpaw site should have at least 3% organic matter, a pH between 5.5 and 7, and a uh, uh, level of nutrients, particularly phosphorus and potassium, that are sufficient to support the growth of the orchard. If the soil test points out any problems related to soil characteristics, address these well in advance of planting. The next step in preparing a pawpaw planting site is to lay out the site for the orchard. 
Pawpaws are typically spaced 10 to 15 feet apart within the row and 15 to 20 feet apart between the rows. Keep in mind that pawpaws require cross-pollination, so design the orchard from the beginning to provide for cross-pollination. This means more than one cultivar present in the orchard. Secondly, think about soil drainage. If there are concerns about soil drainage, raise a berm for the pawpaw trees and plant them on this ridge, ridge or berm. A berm for pawpaws should be about four feet wide and about 18 inches high. Pawpaw orchards establish best from container-grown trees, so it's a good practice to obtain container-grown trees in advance of planting the orchard. The experience of planting bare root pawpaws has been disappointing. Small pawpaw trees establish best with protection from direct sun. This can be accomplished by building individual shelters over young trees or by growing the trees in tree grow tubes. Once the trees reach three to four feet in height, they no longer require protection. Pawpaw trees typically reach maturity in five to seven years of age. As we can see here, a newly planted tree, a tree that is three to four years old, a tree that is five years old, and then a mature tree. Pawpaw trees are commonly trained to a central leader system, similar to an apple. With the central leader system, the pawpaw tree has a single trunk that reaches from the soil to the top of the tree, and then branches coming off at intervals up and down and around the tree. These are called scaffold branches, and the pawpaw crop is produced on the scaffold branches. Pawpaw trees are pruned during the dormant season, and mid to late February is a good time to schedule pruning in the orchard. Pruning is intended to help develop the central leader system. Again, a central leader system has a single trunk and then branches, scaffold branches, arising off of that trunk. And pruning would be focused on thinning out the structure of the tree to allow for good air movement amongst the foliage and the developing fruit during the growing season, removing any broken or dead branches, and removing any branches that are crossed or rubbing on each other. The amount and type of fertilizers to apply to a pawpaw tree depends upon several things. First of all, the levels of nutrients that are present naturally in the soil, and a soil test will reveal information on the levels of nutrients such as phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Secondly, the performance of the tree. And third, whether or not the orchard is in production and has had a crop in that particular year. Pawpaws will require nitrogen on an annual basis and there is a considerable amount of discussion around the amount of nitrogen needed for a pawpaw orchard. In general, the rates and timing that are used in an apple orchard should yield good results in a pawpaw orchard. These nutrients, particularly nitrogen, are spread around the tree in the spring as growth begins, and in some cases farmers are injecting additional nutrients throughout the growing season. Discontinue all nutrient applications by late summer, and certainly by the 1st of September. Pawpaw orchards will require irrigation during periods of drought stress. Keep in mind that in its native habitat, pawpaws grow in moist soil near streams, and they're definitely not drought-tolerant plants. So plan on irrigation from the beginning. Consider the water source. There should be enough water to, to meet the needs of the orchard during dry periods. Consider also the quality of the water from the standpoint of its use through a drip or trickle irrigation, and from the standpoint of produce food safety concerns. Frequently, pawpaw orchards are irrigated using permanent irrigation installations. These are frequently black plastic lines that are about a half an inch in diameter that have built-in or molded emitters at intervals down the length of a line. For pawpaw orchards, a two-foot spacing between emitters would be typical. It's also helpful to have a way to schedule irrigation in a pawpaw orchard. Keep in mind that pawpaws perform best when they receive one and a half to two inches of water per week, either from natural precipitation or from the irrigation system. Pawpaws blossom in the early spring in Missouri, typically in late March or April. The flowers are produced on shoots that grew the previous season and are arranged in rows up and down those shoots. The flowers are bell-shaped. They initially open as a cream or yellow color and then as they age, they turn dark maroon. The flowers have a fetid aroma. This is intended to attract the primary pollinators, which are 
uh, carrion flies or species of beetles. In the pawpaw blossom, the male and the female parts are receptive at different times. Typically, the, the female part is receptive before the pollen is receptive. And effectively, this prevents pollination from within the blossom. And in fact, typically prevents pollination from other blossoms on the tree. This is why it's important to have different cultivars of pawpaw present in the planting to provide for cross-pollination. The native or naturally occurring pollinators for pawpaw can be in short supply in the early spring when the trees are in flower. It can be beneficial to hand pollinate pawpaw blossoms. And this is accomplished by using a small camel's hairbrush, collecting pollen from those flowers that have receptive pollen, and then dabbing the pollen onto flowers that have receptive female parts. And you can tell when the female parts of the paw flower are receptive because they become shiny and moist. From the standpoint of producing a pawpaw crop, frequently the farmer is interested in developing large fruit. For largest fruit size, it's helpful to thin pawpaw clusters to one or two fruit. Here is an example of a cluster that was not thinned. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fruit and none of them will be full size because of the competition for resources within the fruit of the cluster. We have an example here, a cluster of four fruit. One, two, three, four. Notice that one is, is substantially smaller than the other fruit in the cluster. Farmers will sometimes thin these clusters early on to one or two fruit to ensure larger fruit at harvest. Here we see examples of pawpaws where there are two fruit in the clusters. Typically, these, this will yield the largest fruit at maturity. Pawpaws are not particularly competitive against weeds. Weeds will rob pawpaws of sunlight, nutrients, water, and growing space, so it's important to manage weeds in the pawpaw orchard. There are typically three zones to consider when managing weeds in the orchard. First of all, the area beneath the trees, and in many cases, this area is maintained weed-free through the use of mulches, through the use of woven landscape fabric, or through the use of very shallow tillage. Be cautious about tillage. Pawpaw roots that are disturbed will sucker profusely. The second area to consider is the area between the rows, and this is frequently maintained in a non-competitive perennial cover crop, such as orchard grass or tall fescue. This area can be mowed to manage its height, and it provides a good work surface for operations within the orchard. The third zone is the interface between the row middles and the area under the trees. And this area can be maintained free of weeds through the use of uh, string trimmers, through the use of shallow tillage, or the use of carefully placed non-selective herbicides. Pawpaw trees are relatively pest free, but we have noted a number of problems on pawpaw in Missouri. Several insects can damage pawpaw trees. These include a species of leaf roller and also Japanese beetles. Pawpaws are relatively pest free. From the standpoint of economic impact, there are only a handful of pests that trouble pawpaw. An example is uh, leaf rolling caterpillars. We can see the damage they've done to pawpaw. Several diseases can cause leaf spotting and the loss of foliage from pawpaw. Pawpaws ripen in Missouri in late August and September. Now, the signs that pawpaw fruit is ripening, first of all, the change in the ground color, unripe fruit, and ripe fruit. Notice that the ground color has changed to uh, cream or gold. Some cultivars will have brownish areas on the skin as well as the fruit begins to ripen. Secondly, the firmness of the flesh. An unripe fruit, very firm flesh. But as the pawpaw fruit ripens, the flesh yields to gentle pressure. And third, the development of aroma. Uh, pawpaw fruit develops its distinctive aroma as it ripens. Hmm, what a wonderful fragrance. Harvest pawpaws in the morning before the heat of the day. Handle them carefully. Pawpaw fruit are very fragile when they're ripe. 
The uh, pawpaw fruit should be placed in the harvest container no more than two fruit deep to avoid bruising. As soon as possible after harvest, market the pawpaw fruit. It's very fragile and, and a challenge to handle. If not marketing immediately, process the fruit and freeze the pulp, or the fruit can be stored for varying lengths of time in cold storage. As pawpaws ripen, the ground color changes to cream or gold, sometimes with brownish areas, the flesh softens, it gives to gentle finger pressure, and the aroma of the ripe pawpaw develops. Now, after the pawpaws are harvested, we can cut a slice out here and notice that the texture of the ripe fruit is like a very firm banana. Now, within the pawpaw are several rows of large seeds. We can see the seeds here. When processing pawpaw, the seeds are removed and then the pulp is then collected. It can be then used immediately in uh, value-added or processed products such as baked goods, uh, frozen treats such as ice cream or custard, or in fermented products such as beer. The pulp can also be separated from the skins and the seeds and frozen for later sales. The market for pawpaw includes fresh fruit, frozen pulp, and processed or value-added products. With fresh fruit, market pawpaw as soon as possible. Frequently, pawpaws are sold intact at farmer's markets or at fruit stands. Pawpaw aficionados know what a wonderful treat a ripe pawpaw is. Pawpaw may also be cut open, the seeds removed, and the pulp extracted for use in processed or value-added products, such as baked goods, ice creams, or even fermented products, such as beers. The pawpaw pulp can also be extracted and frozen for later sales. Well, thank you for joining me for this video on the American pawpaw. For more information, reach out to the University of Missouri Agroforestry Center. A wealth of resources are available at this website. There's also contact information for specialists who can provide individual consultation in developing a pawpaw orchard.